We have seen over the past two years how quickly things can change. We've had lockdowns, we've seen businesses close, we've seen a rise in mental health issues, and we've managed to make your on mute the slogan for the past two years. So what's next? Well, one thing we can know for sure is that the future is going to be extremely uncertain. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five powerful ways that you can prepare for it. The first thing is to have a backup plan. One amazing thing that you can do is to have a backup plan. Just like how you're gonna have extra money in the bank account in case for a rainy day that you're not gonna use for online shopping, you should probably have a backup plan for the future as well. Planning is a great way to ease your stress because it means that in the future, you're gonna to have to deal with less what ifs. You can obviously write down a plan for the future, what it would look like if you did a, B, C, or D in five years time, which is basically an Odyssey plan. I'll probably make a video on that in the future. So if you wanna be there for that, make sure you subscribe. But the way that I've been kind of having a backup plan is I've been focusing on upskilling. My backup plan is mainly just consisting of building skills. In the case of one skill that I have failing me, then I at least have one, two, or three others that I could use as a support. This essentially leads me on to the next point. In a second, a really powerful way that you can prepare yourself for the uncertainty in the future is to literally just upskill. And the reason why this is such an important thing to do and I highly recommend is because if you have multiple skills, then it means that, like I said before, if one fails you, then you have a bunch of other things that you are good at that could potentially make you employable or that you can use to freelance. When you're picking skills to develop, I'd highly recommend that you make sure that one, it's something that you're going to enjoy, and two, it could potentially earn you money if you want to monetize it later. You've seen in this environment how people can lose jobs and how other people that had a certain set of skills become all of a sudden extremely employable. And so if you can prepare yourself with a few skills that could potentially earn you money, then it's probably a good thing. This actually reminds me of a tweet from Navarre. If you can't code, write books and blogs, record videos and podcasts. This is one tweet from his massive Twitter storm. And I think my interpretation on, of this in this context is that these things that he mentioned, the whole coding, writing books, blogs, recording videos and podcasts, it just seems like perhaps it's a thing of the future. I don't know. Maybe it's just my for you page on TikTok that it's like, you know what, this is the future. But I feel like internally there's this undercurrent in society that's kind of pushing towards people freelancing, doing their own thing, not this nine to five a thing that I suppose that is the traditional way of being employed. Anyway, another powerful way that you can prepare for the future is to make sure that you are flexible. Improvise, adapt, overcome, that sort of stuff. Because that is literally sometimes what you're gonna have to do. Like life has a funny way of throwing curveballs in your way, no matter how prepared you are. When I mean flexibility, I mean your ability to be able to chop and change plans if you need it. You need to have like dexterity, not only physically like you have gotta be able to do something else, but then also like how quickly your mind can adapt to situations. Then I think if you keep flexibility at the back of your mind, that way you're kept on your toes, like you're floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. And a simple way to do this is to walk a different route or you could you know, cook a different meal. The thing is to have something new in your life that you're doing. I know these may seem like very simple things to do, but it's extremely important that you introduce some new thing, some new novelty, novelty thing that, that like into your life so that your body, your mind and everything about you can get used to change. Because when it's used to change, it means that when future change happens, it's like, you know what? You're actually not too bad. Like you're not, you're not uncomfortable changing. All right, one other way is to have a clear vision and purpose. And this is so you can prepare yourself for future storms. A clear vision and purpose can help you stay grounded when future unfortunate events happen because it means that you're still connected with your why, like your reason for doing what you do and like the idea of what you want your future to look like. And when you're still connected with them, then you know what to change, how to change and how you can still live your life with meaning and purpose. For example, I love helping people and my passion is like to talk and speak and whatnot. And the fact that I can have that as a career is an absolute blessing. And so when everything happened last year, it was a bit tough because I couldn't do those things anymore. Without a clear vision and purpose, I wouldn't be making these videos and doing what I love best. I would have very likely been extremely sad and extremely worried about the future. And the only thing that I would be successful at is binge watching TV shows. And that's not necessarily a, an amazing talent to have or an amazing thing to, to be doing um, like 24 seven at the age of 24. So essentially be clear on what you want your future to look like and your purpose. By the way, if you feel like you're in a bit of a rut and you're a little bit lost, you can check out this video over here and hopefully that helps. And on to the last point, the fifth and most powerful way that I believe 
um, that I've only really started getting into is mindfulness and meditation. This is something that I've been taking a lot more seriously as I've been getting more responsibility. It's crazy how like this year for me, I've just been getting busier and busier. And so to be able to manage all those things, it's a little bit tough. Like sometimes I get really overwhelmed with everything that's going on. Sometimes I feel like it gets a little bit too much. But one thing that's been really, really helping me recently is like mindfulness and meditation. I used to be a skeptic in the beginning. Like I used to, you know, try it for maybe a few days and then I see that it doesn't work for me. And the thing is like, because I was aiming for a particular result, like I wanted, you know, that peace, that tranquility that everyone talks about after meditating for X amount of like minutes or whatever it is, right? Because I wanted that immediately. And because while I was meditating or while I was like kind of, you know, sitting and being mindful of like my environment, my body and my breath, because I wanted those results, it was like, it was like interrupting the actual practice. And so as a result, like I, I didn't get those results. And so after trying for like a couple of days, I used to just quit because it just wasn't helping. However, this time around, I'm actually giving it a sincere go. And I'm just doing it almost as like just another activity that I'm doing throughout the day. And what I'm finding is, is that I get less overwhelmed because I just feel like I've slowed down. Or rather, I'm not getting caught up in the what was, what will be, but rather focusing on what is. Yes, I stole that from the end of Drake's poem in Headlines. But anyway, it's easy to get caught up in the daily activities and all the other commitments that we have going on throughout the day. But I truly believe like just a few minutes of like mindfulness or like meditation, however you want to do it, whether it be, you know, focusing on your breath or focusing on your body or like literally just going for a walk in nature and being present to what's around you. When I do it, I mainly focus on my body and my breath because I feel like that can really help me be present because it's something that you take wherever you go. Like wherever you go, you go to some random place, your body's there and your breath is there as well. So like they, those are things that you can use to ground yourself and make you really present. I find that, you know, when we, when our mind's very scattered and, you know, it's in the past and it's in the future or it's like too excited in the present, what happens is that, you know, our, our, our like heart and our mindset can kind of follow that whole scatteredness and so we can feel very overwhelmed very quickly. But when we focus on, you know, what's here and now and focusing on the body, focusing on the breath and just being really present to what's going on, it can help us calm ourselves down and really just see things kind of from the eye of the storm rather than being caught up in the um in the whole chaos that's around there's actually a really good quote from from george Monfort that's basically exactly that i'll kind of I'll, I'll read it out to you respond from the center of the hurricane rather than reacting from the chaos of the storm George Mumford is a sports psychology consultant and he's also a meditation and performance coach like he's worked with kobe bryant and like michael jordan so this guy's like this guy, this guy's a big deal. And like the quote that I just shared with you just kind of sums up, you know, meditation and mindfulness in like a really beautiful way. I think if you're really looking to prepare yourself for an uncertain future, then it's a really good idea to kind of like, you know, be present and like meditation and mindfulness are like one of, one of the many ways that you can go about doing that. Like however you want to go about, about, about being present, like, go ahead and do it but I'm just, I'm just sharing with you guys like this is the way that i've done it and it's just been it's been quite amazing for me so far and i'm probably going to continue doing it i've been using the 10 percent happier app by the way that's something that's just been like that, that's something that's been going on i think i'm currently on a streak of i think 16 days in a row of like at least nine minutes of meditation and mindfulness in a day which is which is not bad which is pretty good hopefully we can bump it up to 10 minutes by the end of next week but we'll see i'll probably leave a link in the description of the video if you want to check out the 10 percent app it's not an affiliate link you can just check it out if you want or not up to you and that's it these are five powerful ways that you can prepare yourself for a future that is very likely to be uncertain have a good morning good day good night good afternoon good life wherever you are in the world and i would definitely see you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye.